right, Vancouver Province columnist Mac with you here on News Talk 980 CKNW. As we continue talking about that incident that just lit up social media in the last couple of days with a Toronto TV reporter, Ashana Hunt, when she uh, turned the tables on those guys who were hurling those sexually explicit taunts at her while she was live, trying to do a live hit for a TV station in Toronto. The guy you heard in the uh, the, the uh, audio who was taunting her and saying he thought it was funny, uh, at one point he said, you should be lucky we don't have a vibrator waving around as well. He's the guy that got fired from Hydro One in Ontario. He was a network management engineer who made over 106000 bucks a year. That's a pretty juicy job to lose over something like this. Now, here's my question for you. Think about this as we continue talking about this. What do you think about that with a guy losing his job? Get set to phone me up on that. But first, let's get some analysis from Greg Rafter. He's a litigation lawyer with Boughton Law, CKNW's on-air legal analyst. How are you doing, Greg? I'm well, thank you, Mike. Thanks a lot for doing this. What do you think of this story? I think it's uh, it's quite remarkable. It's certainly an example of what uh, the social media uh, can convey in uh, this day and age. Do you think it was it was right for Hydro to fire the guy? Uh, that's kind of a difficult question. I mean, the, the first thing you have to remember, Mike, is that a company or an employer can dismiss an employee anytime it wants to for whatever reason, uh, as long as they give reasonable notice to the employee. Uh, so that what happened in this case, you know, I, I don't know all the circumstances. I don't know Hydro's policy. Uh, the other thing to remember is that uh, that an employee can be terminated without giving notice. Uh, if there's just cause, which just means that there there is some justifiable reason to terminate them. So, again, it, it depends on the circumstances in each case. Well, it's interesting that very few people are coming to the defense of, the, of these men, uh, including Canada's Justice Minister, Peter McKay, who was applauding the actions of the Toronto TV reporter who confronted these guys. The Premier of Ontario also uh, backing her up. I mean, she's received widespread support for, for taking these guys on. Ontario Hydro, or Hydro One as it's known in Ontario, said that this guy, for what he did, broke their code of conduct. And that's why he's fired. I mean, in, in your experience as a lawyer, let's say this guy turned around and tried to sue for, I don't know, wrongful dismissal. Has he got any kind of case, do you think? Well, again, I, I've had a quick look at their code, and, yeah. and uh, he he might have a case, a claim for wrongful dismissal. I don't know the circumstances of him, if this was the first time he's ever done anything like that. Otherwise, he's been an exemplary employee. Uh, that's one factor to look at. If he's been warned before about this kind of behavior, uh, that's another factor to look at. Um, but in any event, if I, I mean, from a practical perspective, uh, if I was him, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't consider doing that at all. I mean, he's he's a pariah in the uh, in the media right now for one reason or another. Uh, if he were to bring a wrongful dismissal suit, I think that that uh, that video clip would be played played over and over. And uh, if he was my client, I think I would be inclined to take. I uh, suggest that he try and uh, bury the incident and move on. Is it fair though? to lose your job over over something like this i i mean i'm sure some of the people who know him i've read some reports that oh he was drunk he did something stupid i mean i guess as you said in the social media day and age we live in here i mean is it just in the new, this is the new normal new reality that well, you could get filmed doing anything out in public and you, you should be careful about it yeah well you definitely have to be careful about what you say and do and, and the the scrutiny of the social media now and the the ease with which this incident uh, is transmitted uh, around the world is really quite remarkable. I mean, if, you, if this had happened, uh, you know, a few years ago, even, it, this, it likely would never have got the attention that it has. But, you know, termination is, is, is an incredibly harsh penalty. And, you know, you, you can only justify it when the conduct uh, is significant enough. Uh, it's got the penalty, what they say is the penalty has to be proportional to the act. So you have to look at a, a number of different things, and it always falls on some kind of spectrum. You know, what's the nature of the act that happened here? Uh, was the, are we talking about someone that was distributing child pornography, or was it an individual that was in a in a bar fight? Uh, right. That's one element. Where did where does he where does he uh, fall on the hierarchy within the company? 
uh, higher level employees are usually held to a, a higher level of uh, of scrutiny uh, than lower level employees. And, and then the last thing is, what is the degree of harm uh, that has been done to the company? I mean, how, how much damage has been done to the reputation of the company? What what do you say to your other employees if you don't do anything? And other employees look and, and say to themselves, well, I don't have to worry about it. If if this fellow can get away with what he did, then the company's not going to care what would I do in this, right. this situation. Well, employers employers care about their public reputation. It's the, one of their most valuable assets. Right, and this is why they have these type of codes of conduct. Well, it's interesting that the code of conduct in, in, employ, in an employer like uh, Hydro One in Ontario is one thing, but then you've got the law, you've got the criminal code, right? And it's interesting that the Calgary police, in the aftermath of this, issued a statement um, saying that, look, if this kind of thing happens, uh, they are saying, that call us. This could be grounds for, it could be grounds for a charge. It could be grounds for an arrest causing a disturbance or some other kind of charge. Yeah, I'm not a criminal lawyer, so I, I'm not certain what the elements of those offenses are, but uh, I've seen that in the media, and there's op- obviously uh, an appetite there. I mean, there wasn't just the Calgary Police Force. I saw uh, tweets from, I think it was the Kingston Police Force as well, along the same lines. What do you think of that? Well, it, it, I think it's it's uh, it's a it's a good thing, uh, quite frankly. Uh, this type of behavior uh, has been sort of condoned over the years, and I think it's time that uh, society says no more. Right. And well, you know, maybe the, the silver lining in an event like this is that maybe it stops. Well, that's I think what the uh, what the reporter herself had been saying. Uh, she talked about, um, you know, why, why she did what she did, yeah. and uh, she's not interested in making a complaint to the police. She just wants to bring publicity to this matter so it'll stop it. And I think, based on the media reaction, she got her uh, she got her wish. Yeah, I think so. Well, thank you very much for coming on with your analysis. My pleasure. I appreciate it. That is Greg Rafter. He's with Boughton Law, CKNW's on-air legal 